Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Teddy Rothstein, and I'm honored to be here, and thank you for inviting me. Feel free to take photos and make videos. Now, would you please put your cell phones in silent mode, write your questions on a piece of paper, and add your name and email. You are welcome to request a free copy of this presentation. This presentation is a bit long, 69 slides to be exact. I'm going to pause at slide 30. So, curtains up. I love Philadelphia. I lived there for 10 years when I went to Temple University School of Dentistry and the University of Pennsylvania Graduate School. Now I live in Portland, Oregon, and recently opened an office in Salem, where I specialize in OJW weight control. I commute to Brooklyn, New York, 3,000 miles, every six weeks to provide OJW there as well. Here on this slide, you have my contact information should you develop an appetite, pardon the pun, to learn more about OJW and want to chat with me at some time in the future. In this photo of me, I'm practicing the table clinic I presented earlier this year to the Multnomah County Dental Society. I offer a course in OJW weight control, and the links you see below provide the details. For 20 years, I've been providing OJW weight control, an outgrowth of my orthodontic practice in Brooklyn, New York. I moved to Portland late in 2016. Uncertain whether OJW adhered to the code of dentistry, I raised the question with the Oregon Board of Dentistry whether providing my weight control service as I described it to them, conformed to the Oregon Code of Dentistry. On June 23, 2017, they affirmed that providing weight control services to patients did not violate any of the rules or regulations of the code. Consequently, I opened an office in Salem. Here, I present to you orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. I'm the developer of the OJW weight control appliance and the protocol to provide it. Obesity is a disease per se and is legion and epidemic and recognized as a precursor to a host of serious illnesses and other comorbidities which attend it, as I will show you later, some of which have oral manifestations and a host of other serious consequences. In OJW, the wiring limits the vertical opening to about four millimeters, and speech is unimpaired. It bears no resemblance to IMF, intermaxillary fixation, what oral surgeons do, as you can see, where the teeth are locked together and speech is unintelligible. OJW became a reality when patients noticed that they lost weight when oral surgeons wired their teeth together to heal fractured jaws using a rather primitive, unsightly and painful method. Here are a few of my contributions. One, interlacing the teeth around brackets with the jaw approximating its normal rest position, which I named Rothstein's OJW position of mandibular weightlessness. Two, a robust, serious informed consent. Three, criteria for selecting patients who are a good fit and avoiding those who are not. Finally, for a research survey to assess safety and effectiveness. OJ OJW weight control is a semi-fixed intraoral appliance composed of orthodontic brackets bonded to the canines and premolars, preventing the ingestion of solid food with wires that limit the jaw opening to a maximum of four millimeters without causing any shifting or traction or extrusion on the teeth. Weight loss ensues when the patient adheres to a low calorie liquid diet, typically between 900 and 1200 calories per day, and can be combined with intermittent fasting as recommended by Dr. Jason Fong in his well-received, highly popular book, The Obesity Code. He has posted many videos advancing his thesis. OJW is highly suitable for patients with CEEP, compulsive emotional eating problems, 
to regain control of excessive feeding habits. It allows normal speech and is harmless to the teeth, gums, and jaw joints while preventing the ingestion of solid foods, the ones we call comfort or junk food. OJW is a safe, effective alternative to medications and surgery. Its critics are quick to point out that patients regain weight when the OJW is removed. And yes, in most cases that is true. However, that is true of each and every weight control method. It is the responsibility of the OJW weight control provider to select patients with care, obtain their informed consent, wire them, as you will see later, into Rothstein's OJW position of mandibular weightlessness, and then teach them how to rewire themselves, especially if they come from out of state, and rewire them every five weeks after being unwired for five days. In brief, the protocol is simple, a low calorie liquid diet, 900 to 1200 calories per day, while being wired for five weeks and then unwired for five days. In brief, 5-5 five, five, LCLD, that is five weeks wired, five days unwired on a low calorie liquid diet. In dentistry, OJW weight control is used to treat the cause of OSA, whose most frequent etiology is obesity. Before OJW, dentists could only treat the symptom of OSA, snoring. OJW can be used simultaneously with continuous positive airway pressure devices. This is an interesting note. In the process of obtaining approval for weight control services, I learned that the service of providing treatment for OSA sleep apnea has never been either implicitly or explicitly approved. I suggested to the board that they should remedy this oversight in the shortest possible delay. OJW weight control is not explicitly or implicitly excluded in the code of dentistry in any state. The dentist is clearly not practicing medicine since he or she does not diagnose obesity. It is a safe and effective alternative to weight control by medications and surgery. The position of the jaw is normal, that is physiologic, as I'm going to demonstrate. It allows normal speech and may be helpful in some cases of TMJD. It is simple and inexpensive to fit a patient. Most importantly, I want to repeat that the diagnosis of obesity is made by the patient's physician and consequently the dentist is not practicing medicine. The dentist must coordinate with other members of a healthcare team who provide weight control services including the physician who diagnoses obesity, the patient's dentist who may request removal of the wiring from time to time, the dietitian who helps manage the low calorie liquid diet, and the psychotherapist who helps the patient understand their compulsive eating impulses and treats the depression often accompanying overweight issues. Most dentists are reluctant to provide a weight control service because they are too timid to broach the subject with their patients, unaware that 85% of the dental population accepts dentists as providers of such services. This was noted in the November 2010 JADA cover page article encouraging dentists to provide weight control. The attributes of willing providers are noted above. As a minimum, you should feel comfortable bonding and removing brackets and have a desire to help the overweight with CEEP seep. I have made the concept of weight control by dental professionals a reality by virtue of authoring a research paper on the subject, providing this service to 250 people, creating a Facebook page for patients, a LinkedIn page for dental and medical professionals, 
creating a devoted website and authoring 50 articles on the subject in LinkedIn. And finally, by presenting this topic in a wide variety of venues. Indeed, the AAO is now preparing for me to present my work at one of its major meetings. There is no effective argument to counter the rationale that OJW weight control is a safe and effective conservative alternative to weight control utilizing surgery and or medications. Psych Psychologically, patients who perceive they are being cared for by a team of professionals working in concert will be inspired to achieve their weight goals and maintain them. A dentist who provides OJW weight control must always keep in mind that he or she is solely responsible for maintaining the health of the teeth, gums, and jaw joints when placing an OJW appliance. The weight loss protocol may well include oversight by a dietitian and a psychotherapist when warranted. It bears repeating that in OJW, the wiring limits the vertical opening to about four millimeters and speech is unimpaired. In IMF, intermaxillary fixation, what oral surgeons do, the teeth are locked together and speech is by and large unintelligible. Here is the armamentarium you will as need to do orthodontic jaw wiring for elementary, as this short video reveals. Three cross In action video, tweezers to help you place the brackets. Rest, which is an error. Twelve brackets should be as shown weightlessness. An instrument let's, to position the brackets. The Adhesive. Here is the armamentarium you will need. Point oh one four dead soft ligature wire. Tools three cross to demonstrate why to help you place the brackets. A straw twelve brackets to help you achieve Rothstein's OJW position of physiologic to rest. Position the brackets. A Matthew needle holder, which Adhesive. we call a twister. A scale. A ligature cutter. Point oh one four dead soft to help you ligature press wire. In vertical posts that stick out too far. To demonstrate wiring, you will need safety glasses and finally a straw. A take-home kit to help you achieve Rothstein's OJW position of physiologic rest, a Matthew needle holder, which I call a twister, a ligature cutter, a tapping hammer, to help you press in vertical posts that stick out too far. You will need safety glasses, and finally, the take-home kit for the patient. The chair side assistant's principal work is to apply etch and adhesive to each bracket in turn and pass it to the doctor who seats it firmly from the gingival to the incisal and removes the excess flash. The order for replacing them is upper right 543, lower right 543, upper left 543, lower left 543. The brackets are tacked on with the curing light for five seconds, then each bracket is cured for an additional five seconds on each of its four sides. Now, how to fit the appliance. Step one, bond the brackets 12 in all. That takes 15 minutes. Step two, wire both sides. That takes 15 minutes. Step three, teach the patient how to remove and rewire themselves, especially if they live far from the office. That takes 30 to 45 minutes. The next slide demonstrates the simplicity of wiring the patient. Let's watch and see the wiring in real time. Hello, I'm Dr. Ted Rothstein. Brooklyn Heights Orthodontist and the inventor Hello. of orthodontic jaw wiring for weight Steve. control. Brooklyn Heights Orthodontist today and the inventor of orthodontic jaw wiring for weight control. Wiring in real time. Today, when I'm the OJW is done correctly, the jaws can move between two when and four OJW millimeters is vertically. Done correctly, the jaws can move between two and four millimeters and vertically. 
straw and between the teeth. Straw Take your wire the teeth. and wrap it around number one. Take your wire and then wrap it around bring it around number one. And under number two. Then bring it around and under number Over two. Over number three and out to number Six. Over number three. Then take the top and half out of the to wire, wrap six. it around number then four. Then take the top half of the wire, over wrap five, it around number four. And meet the strand at number six. Over five. And meet do a little twist the strand with your finger. at number six. Take do a little twisting twist instrument. with your finger. Grab the two ends. Take the twisting instrument. Wrap them four or the five ends. times. Wrap them four or five times. Trim the tail. Trim tuck the, the tail, tail out of harm's way. Tuck the tail out of harm's way. Remove the straw. Voila. Orthodontic jaw wiring. Remove the straw. Voila. My fellow professionals. Orthodontic jaw wiring. Thank you for your time. My fellow professionals. Thank you for your time. Now, would you please say out loud the word mama and note that your lips end up slightly touching each other. Note where your teeth are. They are about four millimeters apart. This is the wired position. The lower jaw is being held in position by the tonus of the masseter muscle. This is the position you are normally in 23 hours each day. Try speaking with your jaw in this position and note that it is quite easy and feels normal. This is Rothstein's position of mandibular weightlessness. The jaw wiring forces you to focus on the goal you chose it for, regaining control of compulsive eating. All the reasons you consciously or unconsciously used to permit you to eat those comfort junk foods are banished. You probably recognize many of the reasons because you do them. I know for sure that I do. This slide is amusing, but it is not here just to amuse you, but to remind you how subtle and complex mindless eating can be and allows me to point out that OJW is a physical and mental reminder that you have chosen to distance yourself with a metaphorical gate that keeps out foods that are bad for you in excess. Let me point out some of them to you. You're bored and you can't find anything better to do. It tastes good and you can't stop yourself from eating it even though your belly is full. You're alone and it's the chance to sneak a snack. Something happened in the past, and this is the only way you know to deal with the problem. You feel guilty for not eating because your parents made you finish your vegetables by citing examples of populations plagued by a scarcity of food. I can remember my mother telling me, eat all the food on your plate because there are so many starving children in Europe. It's a reward for successfully achieving a goal. You're avoiding a task and eating is a way to further delay it. You're stressed and feeding your stress instead of your actual hunger. It's comforting and you can't find something better to provide the comfort. And then there is because it's there and it's too hard to give it away, get rid of it or walk away from it. It's revenge when a loved one or friend has told you not to eat something because it's not fair that thinner people can eat junk food without putting on weight. So you shouldn't have to restrain yourself either. You're actually thirsty and without realizing it, you're trying to take away the thirst by putting something in your mouth. Finally, you're not sure why, and it's easier to do it than to think about why you're doing it before you do it. Admittedly, eliminating solid foods for some compulsive emotionals is like a drug addict stopping cold turkey. 
But that is exactly the reason they choose OJW. They are dedicated and passionate. They are out of control and they know it. They are depressed. They need to act. There's one because it's there and it's too hard to give it away or throw it away. I experienced this one recently. It was squares of salty sweet chocolate coated caramel an obscenely large jar of them. I was sneaking one sometimes two every day and burdened with guilt. Solution? I just asked my wife to hide them and she did. OJW is a not so subtle way to remind them that those lame excuses for eating I noted above are the voices of anxiety and depression, not hunger, that are moving them to eat when they're not really hungry. Like every weight loss control method, OJW is fallible. After all, they can remove the wiring with a snip of the wire cutter I provide. That is why some patients need the help of counselors to help them understand the complexities underlying the cause of their eating compulsions or the excuses they construct that pave the way to that next forage in the refrigerator or pantry. I'm recording. In brief, OJW weight control is a constant reminder of your passionate desire to achieve the weight loss goal you chose at the start. You see it in the mirror every morning and night, literally and figuratively, it's in your face all the time. Indeed, it's in your mouth. Take a look. Take a look on this slide at this picture of the enemy. Donuts, double hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, french fries, pizza, shakes. It's no surprise how easy it is to become addicted to such foods. They are rich in calories from the fats, carbohydrates, and sugars they contain. Have you ever noticed how tasteless those low-fat so-called light foods are? That is why these foods are called comfort foods. They are also called junk food. OJW prevents you from eating them. That is, unless you first liquefy them in a blender. Now, I ask you, who's going to do that? Well, let me tell you, patients who need psychological counseling, that's who. Let's pause here and take some questions. Slide 31. The Japanese call it junk fudo. Only 3% of Japanese have a body mass index BMI over 30, the international standard for obesity, whereas 30% of Americans do. A total of 65% of Americans have a BMI over 25, making them overweight, but only 25% of the Japanese. It's because they eat less and exercise more. Of the eight harmful effects noted here, including depression, high bad cholesterol, higher risk of stroke and heart disease, and liver dysfunction, you might guess is increased tooth decay. I'm sure you are aware of the high cost of dental care. Weight control makes sense. I think you will find this next slide is amusing. Let's go see it are seeing here is the Doubletree Hotel's welcome package of junk food. 1300 calories of comfort food complements of the Doubletree Hotel where I presented my work June 6th to the International Conference of Obesity, Nutrition and Fitness as a keynote speaker. Here is the long list of the consequences of prolonged injudicious compulsive eating habits. Some are very familiar, others not so. You can take a photo of this slide and the next as well. I take special interest in this sleep apnea. The knee and hip joint dysfunction was a not so obvious surprise finding for me, but it makes perfect sense. Carpal tunnel syndrome was a complete surprise. However, I checked it out and sure enough, 
It was true. Let me read some of them to you. The first is type 2 diabetes, which afflicts one in three Americans. Hypertension leads to a shorter life, some studies indicate by two to five years. Depression is very common. In my study, 75% of the sample noted depression. OSA sleep apnea snoring, whose etiology is predominantly excess weight. Stroke, knee and hip joint dysfunction. No wonder, since they are key weight bearing joints. Note how many of the overweight use canes and walkers to help them. Coronary heart disease, gallbladder disease, liver disease. You may recall that the pate foie gras you love so much is the product of goose liver disease, osteoarthritis, psychosocial problems, including embarrassment in social situations and employment difficulties, menstrual irregularities, polycystic ovary syndrome, infertility, pulmonary dysfunction, gestational diabetes, post-surgical mandibular advancement, that is, the advanced mandible is unstable in its new position. Low back pain is very common. Increased risk of anesthetic complications is well known. Carpal tunnel syndrome, as I noted before. Venous insufficiency. Deep vein thrombosis. Poor wound healing. Some cancers, colon, endometrial. Osteoporosis. Stress, incontinence, and leaking urine. Uterine prolapse. Esophageal reflux is common. And finally, constipation and tiredness. Here are the criteria I use when selecting patients. In addition, I use three forms, an informed consent, a medical dental history form, and a self-assessment profile form to help patients decide if OJW is a good choice. I will read them from the list. First and foremost, that they are dedicated and passionate to the OJW method. Furthermore, their BMI is between 28 and 38. Overall health is still good. They failed at previous methods of weight control. They are looking to jumpstart an attainable weight loss goal. They consider weight loss medications out of the question and weight reduction gastric surgery too risky. They are eating mindlessly when not hungry or are experiencing binge eating disorder, BED. Again, finally, that they are dedicated to and passionate about achieving and maintaining a weight loss goal. Here are some guidelines I use when advising would-be OJW patients that this method may not suit them. This list includes two more slides, so I'll read only a few of them to you, then a few more of them on slides 36 and 37. Please read a few of them for yourself. A partial list of poor candidates would include B, persons who speak abundantly for business or other reasons whose speech might be rendered less than perfectly clear because of being in the wired position. Persons whose sex life would be rendered intolerable if intimate oral functions were impaired even a little. D, persons with multiple missing loose or decayed teeth. E, those with psychological or emotional disorders who might feel powerless or panicky with their mouth wired into the mandibular weightlessness position. Continuing on to slide 37, persons with systemic diseases such as diabetics whose diet could not accommodate a liquid diet, persons who have limited nasal breathing, whose breathing might be compromised by being in a semi-closed position, persons who are more than 125 pounds overweight or less than 25 pounds overweight, that is, those who are moderately obese and obese, but not morbidly obese because they are candidates for the surgeon. Finally, persons who are taking oral pill capsule form medications could encounter some difficulties trying to pass a large capsule into the mouth behind the last teeth. It would be virtually impossible 
if the wisdom teeth were fully in place. Items N, O, and P are not good candidates for obvious reasons, and persons who drink alcohol excessively and might throw up and take vomitus back into their airway are highly unsuitable, as well as persons who have a BMI greater than 40, except when specifically referred by bariatric gastrointestinal surgeons who want them to demonstrate that they are capable of losing weight. Slide 39 is for those of you interested in learning OJW or who have associates, friends, or colleagues that would like to contact me. The course information is detailed in the LinkedIn articles noted below the photos. Most people on liquid diets lose weight. Oral surgeons prove that. OJW empowers a liquid diet and heightens resolve. You see it, you feel it. It prevents you from eating the comfort, high caloric, minimally nutritious junk food. Ultimately, nothing succeeds like success. You are inspired by your own success and continue exerting the same controls without needing OJW to maintain the new way of caloric control. You wean back to solid food diet and the OJW is removed. In addition, compulsive emotional eaters regain control of their sense of spiraling out of control once they begin a liquid diet. They feel their anxiety hunger pains begin to diminish and see they are losing weight and their self-esteem and self-image begin to grow and they become even more determined to succeed. Consequently, as they say, nothing succeeds like success. That's how OJW works. It's comforting for the SEEP patient to feel that their physician, dentist, dietitian, and therapist are on the same page, united by their combined skills to assist them to achieve and maintain the goal weight they stated in the informed consent at the start of OJW. And surrounded by caring authority figures, they are more likely to attain their goal weight and maintain it. Please take note of the forms patients must provide. One, the medical dental history form. Two, the informed consent. Three, the self-assessment image form. Note especially the physician's release. The release permits the dentist to fit the patient with an appliance. Inherent in it is a diagnosis of obesity and explicit permission to begin a long-term low-calorie liquid diet. It simply says, this patient may begin a long-term low-calorie liquid diet. These nine simple words are your release to fit the patient with an OJW weight control appliance. I tailored the medical dental history form specifically for OJW patients. Hence, do you know what a panic attack is? It's there because the actual experience of having wires for the first time is akin to being set down in a totally unfamiliar place, like Times Square in New York City on New Year's Eve for the first time. One might very well have a panic attack. Asking them this question adheres to advice that forewarned is forearmed. I pay much attention to would-be patients' responses. What if they have teeth that are missing that are used for the OJW wiring? Or they are wearing removable partial dentures. That would make them ineligible for OJW weight control. Here's the questions part of an actual informed consent. It tells me that Carla has chosen OJW and is informed regarding its potential risks and benefits. It begins with basic questions. What is your age, height, weight, and goal weight? Carla, 41, 5'5", 185, goal 130. She wants to lose 
50 pounds. She is fiercely dedicated, motivated, and passionate. We're going to meet her just 11 slides further up the road. Note that Carla is willing to dedicate six months passionately. She will lose about 25 pounds every three months or 50 pounds in six months. That is her goal. Carla completed all her forms, including her contact information, immaculately. Such attention is a good indication of her cooperation. Indeed, my experience is that persons who complete forms precisely and neatly and timely are the ones who will be dedicated and passionate. They are likely to follow the protocol and succeed. This informed consent content makes the patient understand that using elastics in place of wire may well cause her teeth to shift unfavorably and that she may need a different dentist to remove the OJW brackets at additional cost to her if she lives far from the office. In content number three, she affirms that she has read and understands who is a poor candidate for OJW. Moreover, she affirms that she is a good candidate and signs off on that declaration. I am assured that she understands the risks and benefits of my weight loss service. The third form is the patient's self-assessment profile containing many of these self-vision awareness statements. Look at the third down. You realize the need to provide a physician's release. Then look at the last one. Nobody seems to understand. The assessment form lists many more. Slide 52. Persons who inquire about the OJW weight control service ask many important questions, FAQs. At my dedicated website, ojw4weightcontrol.com, you can see all of them. But right here are the four most important of them and the answers. Here they are. Is speech normal? Yes. Is the jaw position likely to cause discomfort or pain? No. Will I lose weight? Yes. Is it safe? Yes. Finally, all patients are provided with a six-page troubleshooting manual providing guidance to handle every potential problem that might occur, the most common of which is related to brackets becoming detached. Here are the first five of ten facts that make OJW a logical option, one that will really help them achieve their weight loss goal, maintain it, and not cause them harm. Let's spell out a few. One, it has no bad reviews. Two, it is safe and predictable. Three, the jaw is positioned naturally. And the teeth never shift because the lower jaw is always in the mama position and speech is clear. Lastly, the teeth, gums, and jaw joints remain healthy. Now, let's go meet Carla. Meet Carla, who I mentioned previously. She is motivated and dedicated and passionate about losing those 50 pounds to get to her goal weight. Here to refresh your memory are Carla's statistics, weight and goal facts, age 41, height 5'5", weight 185, goal weight 130 pounds. It was June 11, 2017, and she came from Abilene, Texas. She is a respiratory therapist. Her oral and TMJ exam and panoramic x-ray were all within normal limits. Her forms were immaculate. I had no doubts she was going to attain and maintain her goal weight. Hi, I'm Carla. Listen and I'm going now to, get my OJ to the quality of Carla's the speech before I fit it trial her. Before this In the following slide, you speak. will hear her speech so, quality that's it. just see after the OJW weight control is fitted. And please note, this is without one whip of practice. 
Hi, I'm Carla, and I'm going to get my OJW done by Dr. Ted. And this is a little trial before this procedure to see how I speak. So that's it. See you later. I love Carla. my OJW. Just after being I recommend and it. wired in the typical OJW position of rest. I love my OJW. I recommend it. Here is a brief summary of my presentation. I have shown how a weight control service is integrated into the dentist's office under a protocol that requires being part of the healthcare team and conforms to every state's code of dentistry. Dentists can now choose to treat the cause of sleep apnea, in most cases, obesity, and in many cases that result from SEEP compulsive emotional eating problems. The healthcare team consists of the patient's physician, dentist, dietitian, and when warranted, psychotherapeutic counseling. The surgeon may opt to begin conservatively by referring some patients to begin weight control by a less invasive method, namely OJW weight control. Finally, I will show you that the general public accepts and welcomes dentists as providers of weight control services. Postscript. I carried out an extensive research study questionnaire of 94 questions sent to a bit more than 100 OJW patients in 2009 related to fundamental basic questions related to safety, effectiveness, and public acceptance. The results were compiled into a lengthy manuscript and submitted to the AJODA and the JADA. Alas, it was not accepted for publication. However, I have kept it updated as new related information came into existence, such as authors who wrote articles affirming that dentists could well do jaw wiring as a method of weight control. The manuscript is replete with the details of the findings. It is available on request. For now, I will present the results of just four questions. I will begin with the one that caused me the most concern. And that is question 58. Given that vomiting could lead to the taking of vomit back into your airway, leading to effects ranging from choking and possibly to death, Please state your position from the list below. I will read you just the first three answers and you can read a few more for yourself. 55.6%. The informed consent I filled out told me all I needed to know. 44%. I was warned of that, so I carried my wire clippers with me at all times. 38.9%. It is possible, but highly unlikely. Question 63. Why did you choose the OJW method to begin with? 78.9%. My being overweight was causing me to be depressed. 68.4%. I felt this approach might help me bring my compulsive overeating under control. 63.2%. I realized that my excessive weight could have serious health-related consequences. 57.9%. I was finally able to locate a dental professional who could provide the OJW weight control service. Slide 66, question 21. My choice below indicates how I feel about OJW for the control of weight in compulsive overeating. 70% OJW is both safe and effective. Slide 67 and question 66 of the research study. Do you believe it is the right and responsibility for dental professionals to provide this service to compulsive overeaters? Response, 85% indicated yes. Here is my contact information. Here is my contact information. Have a great day. Thank you for attending my presentation.
Have a really great day.